So, Henry, please take the stage and tell us all about using emerging platforms as a testbed for new ideas. Hello. Uh, so I'd just like to say, to begin with, that there's not going to be any uh, baby tigers or golden dwarfs uh, at this talk. So I apologize if that's something you guys were expecting. So, so my title is Emerging Platforms as a Testbed for New Ideas. I just want to say from the beginning that uh, there's parallels between emerging platforms and smaller platforms. Um, I'm focusing on emerging platforms primarily because of the, like, the marketing uh, push that goes behind it by platform holders. Um, so that's basically why I'm focusing on this. Um, I'd like to say a big thanks in advance to uh, Casual Connect for having me here and uh, to you guys that managed to make it. <laughs> thanks very much. So I'd like to say a little bit about who we are uh, to begin with, because uh, we're kind of a small company based in London and not that many people hear about us really. Um, so this is me on the left, right, right hand side, and uh, Dan on the, on the left. Um, we're a company called Mudvark. Uh, we were formed uh, about a year and a half ago, um, and me and Dan were friends from university. And uh, we worked on separate games whilst at uni. Um, I worked on a game called Mush, uh, which was a Windows Phone game. That went on to win a BAFTA, which was uh, super cool. Um, Dan worked on a game called Cube, um, which was a Steam game. And sort of my, my problem with working on Mush was that uh, the team was really big. So going into uni, they encourage you to work in these big teams. And um, there were five of us. And it, like, as indies, it's kind of unsustainable having five full-time people working, working on a project. So we kind of uh, separated and decided to go a bit more agile. And uh, we started with two of us, um, and we made a game called uh, Mortimer, which I'll show you, I'll show you a bit in a second. Um, we invested dividends from uh, the game Cube um, in order to bootstrap our company, uh, and that worked, that worked great for us. So I'll just show you our game Mortimer, and this was, I'll talk a little bit more about it in a sec. I'll just show you the trailer to begin with. I don't know if there's audio. So uh, my role in Watermelon, well, it's quite cool actually. So Dan is very business focused. He does all the business, all the uh, PR, all the meetings and stuff like that. Um, and I do all the development and the art and essentially build the game. So my role for this project was building the game, which is pretty straightforward. Um, so this is where we come onto the topic of the talk, the main topic. Um, and our strategy from the very beginning was to use Windows 8 the launch of Windows 8 as an open beta. I know lots of companies that um, like released to Canada or Australia, and they use that as an open beta. Um, for us, we decided to use a platform as an open beta, which is kind of a, a unique approach. I don't know of anyone else that has done that. Um, so what happened is uh, we released it for Windows 8 launch. We wanted to capitalize on the launch of Windows 8. Um, it only took three man months of development. Um, we, had, we went to develop conference, and we spoke to Microsoft. And they were like, well, Windows 8 is coming out in like three months. Can you make a game in three months? And we're like, probably not, but we'll try. Um, so but we did in the end, so that worked out well. Um, I was just working full time on that for three months. It was like, super, it wasn't really a full game. Like it was super simple. It was probably only about half an hour's worth of gameplay. Um, it was very much a vertical slice. Um, and like, I don't want to get booed off stage for saying this, but it was completely free. There was no monetization like whatsoever. 
So that, that I don't know anyone that would say that that's a good idea. That's like a bit of a crazy strategy. Um, but the idea really was to to get feedback. It wasn't to make money at this stage. It was to refine the idea so that we could release some larger platforms. So one of the key points for us during this open beta stage was to gauge user interest. Um, we w obviously, when you release a game, you want to make sure that uh, that it's going to be successful when you finally launch on your primary primary platforms. Um, we got around a million downloads. Uh, last time I checked, I think it was 900,000 something. Um, so it's probably a million now, I'm not entirely sure. Um, we were able to rank at the number one game uh, and number two ranking app. We outranked like Netflix and Google search, uh, our, our key point, which was pretty cool. Uh, you can see there from that screenshot that we're actually outranking uh, Halo and Cut the Rope and Where's My Water and Lego and stuff. It's very cool. Um, and what was great, this is only three months of development, so like to rank this highly, it was like took us completely by surprise, really. Um, but what was great is from ranking so highly in the store, we attracted a lot of pub publisher interest, and that gave us great leverage when it came to negotiating uh, publishing deals. Um, so yeah, so then we decided to work with a publisher, uh, following our success launching our open beta, so which secured future investment, which meant that we were able to continue developing. So that was very very cool. And probably the most valuable thing of all uh, from an open beta on a new platform is the um, just the huge amount of user feedback we got. It was insane. We got over 2,500 user reviews. Over a thousand of them were five stars, but um, uh, we weren't. The, the five star reviews are great, but we were more interested in the ones where people were angry, um, which was quite, <laughs> was quite a few. Um, and it's great as well because if you've only invested three man months of development and you're getting really negative user feedback, you could just like scrap the game and work on something else. And you're going to know early on. In if instead you're focusing like two years on a project for an iOS launch and then you release it and it's a dud, it's, it's too late. So releasing an open beta on, on a new platform works great for us in that, in that respect. Um, so these are just a few key points that we were able to bring away from some of the reviews. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's a really great one here where someone said, uh, every day that you don't release uh, no, every week that you don't release um, additional levels, we're going to reduce our star rating by one. So people were trying to blackmail us into reducing extra content, which is, which is probably a good problem to have, I guess. Um, uh, there's fr there was very key specifics on what players enjoyed. Uh, there was very clear eagerness for additional content, so we knew that there was an area that we were going to be able to monetize later down the line. Uh, at this stage, everything was free. Um, what's great as well about releasing something for free is that there's a perceived value. So uh, the second we add, we added in-app purchases for additional content, even just there being uh, something that you can purchase in-game, uh, people were finding that uh, we were, our, our reviews were sort of slightly lowering. So the, just the perceived value of everything being completely free to begin with is a great way to get really good reviews and boost your uh, chart ranking. Uh, and oh yes, what was brilliant is there was we, we built it all in HTML5, and we were able to identify uh, like cross-platform issues, uh, like C CPU architecture disparity, um, and some other things uh, that which we wouldn't have been able, we wouldn't have even known if we'd released it straight onto iOS or Android. Um, so we were able to catch catch things early, which is which is super valuable for us. And uh, uh, I gave a talk recently at uh, a Tiger conference in London, and I said that. Um, Anyone that says HTML isn't ready uh, is a liar. And that actually got quoted by Pocket Gamer, so I'm not going to say that again. Um, yeah, it's controversy. Um, but HTML5 is ready, so those that say it isn't ready, I don't think are using it correctly, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, so we're, we're using a, a Cocoon.js, which is a, a native bridge. Um, we're using that for iOS and Android. We're getting like what 60 frames per second on most hardware, and it's like near native performance. So uh, we're having to do optimizations, sure, but they're optimizations that you you do anyway if you were making a, a native game. So, um, and what's great? Now, hardly anyone knows about this. Node WebKit is a piece of open source technology built by Intel, and uh, you can wrap your HTML5 game as uh, a Windows, a Mac, or Linux executable. Like, and it's got Chrome. It's got Chromium back end, so it's super performant. You can't even tell the difference. So, um, so if you're making a game, like you've got Windows, Mac, and Linux like out the door with HTML5 support, which is brilliant. 
Uh, Crosswalk is a bit of new technology that's been released recently. Um, that's a, na a native bridge that uses Chromium, so you get super fast performance on Android. And like, there's so many platforms with HTML5 support. Like Windows 8 supports it out the door. That's been hugely successful for us. It's been our most successful platform. Um, just because it's super low competition, the marketplace isn't fully mature. And if you have a game that has that real premium feel, you're almost guaranteed success. Uh, Xbox One supports it out the door. Um, when I go back after this conference, we're going to be working on our, our Xbox One version of this game. We're going to add Connect support, which should be kind of cool. Uh, Wii U supports it out the back. You obviously, you've got web. Uh, Firefox OS, Tizen, Windows Phone, Android iOS, Mac, PC, Linux, BlackBerry. So there's there's huge platform support. Uh, these screenshots here, we use a game engine called Construct 2, which is kind of like Game Maker. Uh, not many people have really that heard of it, but it outperforms Game Maker's HTML5 output by like 20 times or something. It uses WebGL uh, and then falls back to Canvas, uh, which is super, super performant. It's like ridiculously, ridiculously performant. So that's great. And so this, this was a huge one for us. The new platform incentives, uh, the publicity. So platforms, like emerging platforms, they're, like, they're, they're emerging, but the companies behind them aren't emerging. They've got huge press leverage. Um, if, you, if you look at this picture on the left, that's like a, sm a small team of like two guys, I think. Um, they made a Windows 8 game called Janksy, uh, and they were able to get a cut, like cover of develop. Uh, and that's, like, that's huge. Um, this is uh, me and Dan. Microsoft were able to negotiate us getting like a huge double-paid spread in Develop Magazine. This was the GDC issue of Develop, um, so that was hugely valuable. And uh, with Microsoft put loads of pressure on uh, conferences and talks as well, so that we can get uh, time to discuss and uh, do presentations and stuff, which is brilliant exposure for us. Um, so yeah, yeah so. and uh, the emerging platforms like. If you're thinking about Microsoft, Google, like Google Glass is an emerging platform, uh, Samsung and Intel with Tizen, uh, Mozilla with Firefox OS and Ubuntu with Ubuntu Phone. These aren't small companies, these are huge companies and they've got incredible amounts of leverage to get you exposure. And one of the key points uh, for us was working as, a, as an extension to the marketing efforts of the platform holder. So we helped to sell the platform. We were going around saying how great Windows 8 was, um, Microsoft loved us because of that, so that in turn got us more events uh, and more exposure. Um, and we, we turned into a hero app, uh, which means that we would go along to like a Microsoft event or something, and then they'd be talking about us, like a picture of us would appear. It's like crazy. And, um, uh, yeah, and the really key point was when you're developing these relationships with the platform holders, like these platform holders are super interested in developers because they're, they're a new platform. They're not like Apple, they're not like a faceless uh, company um, who don't have to do any work really to get exclusive content. Um, so developing these relationships with, uh, with the people that can make features happen was super vital to us. Like we were, we were getting a feature every, I think we got like 10 marketplace features or something ridiculous, which is really what, where our downloads and our ranking came from. And uh, so financial incentives, there's like, there's huge amounts of financial incentives for emerging platforms because people are trying to get their apps together. Uh, Windows Phone probably isn't really an emerging platform anymore. I would say it's more of a, a small platform. Um, uh, but I, we developed a game for when Windows Phone was first coming out. So I guess it was emerging at the time. And there's all sorts of other emerging platforms. But the amount of funding that's available, like the App Campus is, is a funding thing that not many people know about. But you can get up to 70,000 euros investment, uh, free development workshops, Microsoft backing, and all the only thing that you have to do is have like 90 days of exclusivity on Windows Phone, and then you can take it away. I mean, that, if you're an indie, or if, you're a, if you've got an R&D team and you're in a bigger studio, then that's like incredibly valuable. Um, and then it just covers the costs. And then you've got a game that you can then take to other platforms. And so the next one is, Tizen. Tizen is very much an emerging platform. Um, it's primarily HTML5 based, which is, uh, which is great because your code base can be used on, on other platforms. So if you want to target Tizen as an emerging platform, you can uh, make your game in HTML5 and then you can bring it to all the other platforms for major, major releases. 
This is a competition that's finished recently. Uh, we've entered it, the winners haven't been announced. But, but there was over $4 million worth of uh, prizes. And I think they only gave out about uh, 500 development devices. So if you think about all the developers that are entering this competition, hardly any of them actually had physical hardware. We were lucky, lucky enough to get some hardware. So uh, it would have been very easy with a, a super polished title to uh, get one of these, snag one of these prizes. And that's enough to bootstrap games development for, for several years, winning one of these top prizes. And so I'd just like to have a, s a quick summary of, uh, of what our strategy was. We went very consciously into Windows 8 development as an open beta as our strategy. We hadn't really heard of anyone doing it before. Um, so we released early on a merging platform. Uh, that was key uh, to get the, the platform holder backing. Um, we developed a relationship with platform holders to harness PR and talk marketplace features. Uh, we then ranked highly in low competition marketplace. We entered and win one uh, platform specific competitions. Um, we were then able to use awards and ranking as leverage for investment funding. That's how we were able to get a publishing deal. Um, we then improved the game with feedback from the early release and then we released on a major platform. Now, what's key here is that there's no, this is a normal development strategy. What you're doing is you're, you're creating the first prototype but the only difference is you're releasing it on a platform early. Um, you're able to get huge benefits from releasing on these on, on emerging platforms to begin with. Um, and then, then you can release on a large platform. And it's like, what have you lost? You haven't lost anything. So yeah, so that's essentially it. And I hope, I hope this has been of value to you guys. And thanks for listening. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, that'd be awesome. I say loads of really exciting things. Um, yeah, thanks very much. So it's, it's been an ongoing process. So it was three months to begin with to release uh, on Windows 8. And then we've kind of <laughs> dabbled in releasing additional content. It's kind of na how difficult to nail down how, how long specifically we've worked on it. I would say development now, with, uh, we've got 72 levels. It's probably taken about eight months of solid development, I should think. Um, there's been a lot of refining of the first world based on user feedback. So. We released the first one. I don't think it was very good to begin with when we released the first world, and then we were able to make iterations over a longer period of time. Cool. Any other questions? <laughs>